A lot of people have been asking me what I've thought of some of the new big releases, and there have been a lot of them. I'm going to comment on just a couple. Uh, the latest one being uh, Rock Band World Tour, which I have not actually played yet. Uh, my main thought on that is with Rock Band 2, there's been like three Guitar Hero releases that have been going on. Uh, the market is getting really saturated. I was just walking down the game aisle, and it's literally cluttered and hard to maneuver, even in like big stores like Best Buy, with all of the peripherals, all of the drum sets, all of the guitars, wireless guitars. Uh, there's portable drum sets. like They don't even have the stand. They're just like take-anywhere drum sets. Um, the market is getting really saturated, and I think we're, we're rapidly reaching the point when uh, people are really going to give up on all of these music games. Um, they're cashing in Activision, Harmonix, all those guys. They're cashing in on this, on this uh, craze like nothing I've ever seen before. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're eventually going to reach the point where we have like Guitar Hero Beck and Guitar Hero R.E.M. And people are just going to reject that. They're going to be like, no, we're, we're not doing this anymore. I'm not buying a third drum set. And that's, that's actually what's holding me back from um, Guitar Hero World Tour. I already have a drum set. And probably it's a lot better drum set than the one I have. But I just don't have room to store this shit. Like, it's, it's crazy. I... I don't want to spend 180 bucks on this. I don't care what the soundtrack is. And I think a lot of people are with me on that. Um, I don't know. Uh, the big game I wanted to comment on today was uh, Dead Space. I'm talking about the PS3 version, but uh, this kind of applies to almost all the versions, I think. Um, I hate to give reviews in the form of bylines. I don't like to be trite. I don't like to be kind of cutesy with my, with my headlines. But really, when you're talking about Dead Space, my review for this is it's Resident Evil 4 in space! And that's about it. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Resident Evil 4 is a really, really good game. It had revolutionary controls that just changed the entire survival horror genre, and I stand by that. A lot of people disagree, but really good controls and it changed things a lot. Uh, Dead Space controls almost precisely the same way. It does one thing a lot better than Resident Evil 4, and that is you can change weapons in real time. That's what I'm saying is, like, Resident Evil 4's biggest drawback was you had to go to your inventory screen, stop the action, fuck around with your inventory, change weapons, and all of a sudden you got back out, your shotgun was out. Why can't you just push a directional button and change weapons? Dead Space does that. Um, in fact, almost everything in Dead Space is in real time. You go to inventory, you check mission objectives, uh, communications, the log entries, all of that takes place in real time in a really clever way where you kind of have this holographic interface in front of you where the logs and everything just kind of appears in this little window in front of you. You can walk around and do stuff. It doesn't interfere that much. If you have to shoot something, you hold your gun up, the holographic screen goes away, and you can shoot stuff. It's really clever. Um, there's there's no heads up display uh, and and that's actually good it, it keeps you in the game it kind of makes you feel like you're really there it doesn't clutter the screen up your health bar is reflected by this like, like these glowing lights on your back which might seem kind of silly at first but it works it, it's it's quick reference and it's handy um, I do think that sometimes the game misses out on a first person viewpoint um, uh, also. It's, it's very derivative, I find. Um, it kind of feels like when you're playing Dead Space that you've played this whole thing before. Uh, and again, not a bad thing, but it feels kind of repetitive. Uh, I'm referring mainly to Doom 3. I'm referring to System Shock, System Shock 2. It feels very, very similar. You're not facing an evil artificial intelligence in this one. But just the whole notion of running around a gigantic ship, the collecting items, the kind of role-playing elements, it feels a lot like System Shock 2. And uh, aside from the graphics, which are much better, uh, plot-wise, there's not much to recommend this one. Basically, it's a bug hunt. You play a salvage, op uh, a salvage officer on a crew of like three called Isaac, and you're the only guy in the spacesuit, so you can run around in a vacuum, which is cool. Uh, there's zero gravity elements, which is is original. I will grant that. Uh, you can get a sense of vertigo sometimes doing that, but uh, it, it's it's pretty effective. The sense that you're that you're in a spaceship uh, is 
is really hammered home. The fact you can walk through hull breaches, go outside in, the, in space, and you've got a limited supply of air. Sometimes a little too, too restricted, but whatever. Um, it's, it's really effective, and I think it's probably one of the most effective uh, survival horrors in space ever made. Uh, I do have some questions, however. Uh, mainly plot-related, uh, or setting-related. Um, maybe some of you guys can explain this to me. Oh, um, also, I have one major complaint I have about almost every next-gen game, before I get to my questions, um, why, cannot, why can we not have a setting that increases the text size on, on screens? For instance, if you don't have a high-def TV, and I know, me in the Stone Age, I don't, if we don't have a high def TV, I can't read anything. The text is too fucking small. Like, uh, like in uh, Dead Rising, you can kind of excuse Dead Rising for being one of the first games to, to kind of feature the high def stuff. The text was too small. Can't read it. Can't change it. And they didn't fix it in later revisions of it. Like they did, like a Platinum Greatest Hits version. They didn't fix it. Dead Rising is really, really hard to read. I miss out on a lot of this stuff. And maybe the answers to my questions are in these data logs. I can't read anything. Um, it's just a 480 type thing. Uh, I can't see anything. Uh, I just wish there was some kind of setting that would make the fonts bigger. Anyway, um, some of the questions I have in, when it comes to Dead Space relate mainly to the setting. For instance, the store. Most of what you do in Dead Space... Uh, if, if you want ammo, if you want health packs, if you want a new set of armor, if you want weapons, you go to these little stores, and the stores are scattered throughout the ship. Okay, fine. Most of the time, you're picking up money and credits, you're getting there, you're putting them in the store, you get your weapons. Fine. My question, however, is why are these things available in the store? I know it's a game, I know I'm raising this just to be kind of a curmudgeon, but... Why are you able to buy flamethrower fuel from the store? Is this common in in a ship, in, in any kind of ship in the in the future, where like you're walking around, you see a store, and you're like, ah, I could use about ten gallons of napalm right about now. You go to the store, you pick it up, you stuff it in your suit, and then off you go. Who who goes like, hmm? I'm walking around, and all of a sudden, something just slashes half my arm off, and I go, I need a large med pack, and I go spend 3,000 credits, and I pick up a large med pack, and I stitch myself up. Who goes, I need pulse rifle ammo, and spends 10,000 credits getting pulse rifle ammo? Like, who's running around a store doing this? I know. Uh, it, it just seems kind of silly that you're spending money on this sort of stuff when nobody else would really spend money on this on, on this kind of thing. System Shock 2, on the other hand, most of the stuff you bought, it seemed a little more plausible. Like, you could buy chips, you could buy soda from a machine, and you could drink that. You know, something you could actually picture somebody wandering past going, hmm, a Coke, I'll have one of those. Nobody goes, I need Ripper ammo. Aren't you kind of provided with that if you're like a space marine? You don't need to go to a store. It's kind of artificial. It's, it's just meant to be kind of a restricting factor. Um, you know, you can't just pull all the stuff you want. But why can't you just find this kind of stuff? Why can't you, like, say, manufacture it, saying with nano machines or something like that? Which is actually something they do with the upgrades, is they have you have a bench where you upgrade your weapons. I, I, th I kind of think you could do this transparently through the nano machines or something like that. Um, also, the nature of the weapons you're using puzzle me somewhat. Um, most of the time you're running around with a weapon called the plasma cutter. Uh, the main reason for this being is most of the aliens you can cut their arms and legs off because you can't really kill them. You can just make them ineffectual. Like, you can't make them kill you. They, if you cut off their claws, they can't hurt you. So you spend this thing, you're kind of using a modified plasma cutter, which is a, which is a, a salvage tool to kill these monsters. You know, okay, fine, that's kind of cool. We're using, like, hardware power tools, essentially, to kill monsters. Okay, I'm down with that. So let's go look at the other weapons that we use, and I'll just ask you when you would ever use these in a salvage operation. Okay, the line gun. 
Um, mainly you have to play this game to know what I'm talking about, but the Lion Gun shoots this horizontal wave out in front of it that cuts things. That, like, it'll, it, it, it just slices anything in its path. Okay, um, that's another cutting implement. And you're done with that. Maybe you're like, I could cut some kind of giant girder in space. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll go with you on that you're cutting large industrial beams of the Lion Gun. However, the secondary fire on that is a timed mine with radial damage. That's unusual. Okay. The third is the pulse rifle. Okay, you steal a Marine's pulse rifle. I'm down with that. My favorite is the Ripper. The Ripper is a medium-range, remote-controlled, circular saw blade. Who invents that? I mean, it's awesome, but who... <laughs> e either it's a weapon or it's a tool. Who's like... Either you're a Marine with a really sick sense of humor going like, I'm going to run around and shoot a remote-controlled circular saw blade at my enemies. <laughs> okay, or you're a space lumberjack, and you're like, I'm going to go cut that tree down over there. Chak, chak. And you, you shoot your remote-controlled circular saw blade, and you chop down a tree. I... I I, I just question why you would ever invent such a device that... that <laughs> it seems like a really easy way to get hurt accidentally with your remote-controlled saw blade. All right. And, and, and why, you would ne why anyone would buy these things <laughs> commercially. <laughs> like, what possible could use, use could you have for this inside a spaceship? All right. Uh, the contact beam. A very powerful build-up single-shot energy blast. Okay, it's a weapon. Whatever. A force gun. A wide cone, short range, high knockback, damage force blast. Is this a... W is this a weapon? <sighs> and, and the flamethrower. Again, why do you need a flamethrower in space? Doesn't that seem like really dangerous in an oxygen rich environment when you're when you're shooting around a flamethrower? Why do you need one? Is it to stop all the people with the circular saw guns that are running around? I I, I just don't understand why these things exist. Um also the stasis and kinesis modules. You have these devices on your suit called stasis and kinesis. One of them slows, like you point at a device and it slows it down into bullet time. And also you have telekinesis. Okay. Um, in System Shock, you had psychics who could do these things psychically with their minds. Okay. And for some reason, I was kind of more able to accept that, except for the fact that now we just, we're just told we have these things. They're just like, Isaac, use your stasis to slow that horrible whirling machine down. And you're like, all right. Science! And you, you stop these things with the power of science. I, I would just like to know, maybe, I would just like it explained how we come to have these personal bullet time devices and, and personal telekinetic devices that we can, we can throw things around. I, I just don't understand why we have them and, and why they like why they operate on battery power. Can I have like a cord that I can plug into a wall and throw things however I want? Uh, can I just slow people down for fun? Does it hurt them? Did people do this routinely or is it just kind of a salvage thing? Is it weaponized? I don't know. Um, but anyway, uh, that's my general review of, of Dead Space. It's a good game. I had fun. I just didn't think that it made a whole lot of sense. Um, so, anyway, uh, I would rent it. You could probably beat this in a weekend. Um, again, the story is nothing special. It's your usual stable of, uh, of you know, Isaac, we need to send a distress call. Enable the Comaray. Oh, crap, the Comaray is damaged. Get a replacement part from here. Oh, somebody locked the door where the replacement part is. We need to find the captain. Ugh. Captain's in med bay, and now we need to find a way to open med bay. Here's how you blow the door open to med bay. But to get the explosives, we need to go down to chemical storage. 
So you kind of got these layered objectives that just one on top of the other, stack and stack and stack. and it, it's, it's standard. Um, it's still pretty scary. I, I, okay, I won't say scary. It's got, it mainly relies on the jump scares. But for that type of game, it's okay. Uh, Resident Evil 4 in space. Anyway, I'm going to go. I've gone on longer than I should have. Uh, have a good weekend, guys.